Good morning, Mario. And good morning, Switch fans. Man, it has been wild and crazy over here. I have been doing a ton, but you know, Nintendo is doing a bunch as well. So I got to bring you all the very interesting news. What Nintendo is up to before I fall asleep. It's important that we get you your GMM. And that's why today we're talking all about leaked Nintendo games. We're talking about delayed Nintendo games. We're talking about new Nintendo releases that blew everyone away. And we're talking about some mysterious things that Nintendo is doing with Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, but that is not all. So make sure to buckle up and get ready. This here is the wildest ride in November, and I'm so glad that you're here with me. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to smash that like button if you enjoy the videos and let me know your take in the comments down below. As you probably have seen from my feed, a lot has been happening. Animal Crossing New Horizons dropped their 2.0 update early. It's unclear if it was a gift or an accident, but we're not gonna talk much ACNH because I obviously have a bunch of videos. And if that's not your cup of tea, I'm sorry. Um, I recommend Tazo Passion. Love making tea jokes whenever I can, but it'll just be kind of a couple day thing while the update is fresh and fun for everyone. And then we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming, but GMM ain't gonna quit it. No matter what else is happening in the world, you can count on that. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, it's so good. I feel like the tea is best on days where the news is the most awesome. And so we're gonna kick it off with some really cool stuff about Dark Siders. We all know this franchise. It's a popular one and it's popped up on Switch many times. Actually, it's popped up on Switch four times because all the Dark Siders games are on Switch. Dark Siders 3 recently arrived, and now it seems like there is a fourth main Dark Siders game or something new in the Dark Siders franchise because new official art popped up from an artist who previously worked on Darksiders and now is making new promotional material for THQ Nordic, and it looks like he has drawn up a very angry lady. Fans have noticed that this looks to be Lilith, mother of the Nephilim, who has featured previously in the Darksiders franchise, and while we have no idea what they're doing, it stands to reason that THQ Nordic would want to keep this IP afloat. Now, I personally love Darksiders Genesis, which was a twist on the series that brought in co-op. Full co-op is something people have wanted and dreamed of for a while, and initially, that's what they said their plans were for this franchise, that they introduce all the horsemen, and boom, they would bring it to a co-op game. Could this be what it is? Or could this be something where we play as Lilith? Are we swapping sides? What's going on? Let me know in the comments down below if you'd be pumped for more Darksiders on your Switch. And I'll keep you posted once we find out more details on this mysterious hidden project. But when the game industry giveth, it also taketh away. And Marvel's Midnight Suns, brought to you by the XCOM team at 2K for Axis, it's been delayed. That game was supposed to launch on Switch in March 2022. And frankly, it looked fantastic. A nice mix of XCOM and Wolverine and card battling. I am here for it. But the game is not here for it because they delayed it to second half 2022. No specified month or day. They just said, hey, on behalf of Access Games, thanks for sharing how excited you are for Marvel's Midnight Suns. We've been thrilled to see your reaction. We decided we made a very tough decision to move our launch to the second half of 2022. We know many fans were looking forward to playing, but we pushed it because we need more time to make the best game possible. Sounds pretty par for the course. And hopefully this game is much more more than par for the course. If they're delaying it to make it better and it can end up being a wonderful title, then I am all for it. I would have loved to play it in early 2022, but there's so much to play that we're not gonna be missing out too much. And this just gives another game to look forward to as the year progresses. So for Axis, keep it cool and keep this game coming. I still hope it comes out day and date on Switch and the delay does not affect the port. I'd love for this one to be an absolute home run come next year. You know what else is still coming next year? Breath of the Wild 2, or at least Nintendo claims it is. They had their investor call, their report, and they updated things like upcoming release dates. They said, hey, guess what? Our games are still coming in the order we said they were. So they said, yeah, you know, it's Advance Wars in spring, and then it's Splatoon 3, and then we've got Breath of the Wild 2, and we've got Bayonetta 3, and Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, and Metroid Prime 4. All those games are 2022, except MP4. Samus is probably gonna go into a little Morph Ball sleep session for at least a year or two before another game in that series drops. But hey, Breath of the Wild, didn't get a delay yet. We'll have to wait and see what its window is. I'm at this point fully expecting second half 2022. Any signs of a summer release to me have kind of gone with the wind. And so I would believe this is probably their big fall title in 2022, but it's good to know that it's still not delayed, right? At this point, like that feels like a victory. Please let me know if you're still excited for Breath of the Wild 2, and I expect all of you to say absolutely I am. SMT5 is the next game up for Nintendo's lineup, and it's the first half of their November release schedule, and um, it's freaking amazing. 
The Metacritic for SMT5 is sitting at an 87 with a bunch of scores above the 9 level, and it seems like people are in love with this one. They say they did a phenomenal job acclimating the game to the modern era and really advancing both the gameplay formula and the story while still retaining the difficulty and structure that made SMT so darn popular. Now, it's great to see another Switch game succeed and evolve itself up on this platform. The Switch is just downright awesome at taking games to the next level, and SMT seems to be no exception. I did see a few reviews say that the story didn't really hit home with them and it felt a little paper thin, but then others said they loved the story. It seemed like everybody agrees though, the battle system and the combat is where it's at. That is the star of the show. And for me, that's awesome. In a game like this that runs across so many hours, you're gonna be doing a lot of demon dueling. And I'm glad that is the best piece of this puzzle, but many people thought this game was just amazing all around. So if you're ready to sink your teeth into a big JRPG for this holiday season, it seems like Shin Megami Tensei 5 is the place to play. Let me know in the comments down below if you're gonna pick this one up, especially now that the review scores are so star studded. Let's quickly talk sales figures. I know sometimes numbers aren't the most exciting thing, but they are important, especially when history is involved. Now, Nintendo Switch has reached 92.87 million units sold, approaching the triple digit 100 million mark. It's really close to Wii, which was at 101.63 million, and man oh man. And by the next report, it'll probably smash bros this figure to the stratosphere and take claim as king of Nintendo's court, the top selling console it's got going ever. Now on the games front, things stayed about same. The list is where it's going to be for a while. Now Mario Kart 8 Deluxe though continues to crush and passed Mario Kart Wii to be the best-selling Mario Kart, best-selling racing game of all time. Amazing props for that game. Although Nintendo, I really want Mario Kart 9. So I think it's sold enough, right? It's almost at 40 million. I think it's sold enough. We can move on. Mario Party also reached 16 million. Super Mario Party that is, which is insane. I'll be curious to see how superstars sell because it seems like that is the better received game and has the more pure board game action. But Super Mario Party came out at a beautiful time and that game has gone on to sell like gangbusters. Like I said, the rest of the list is par for the course, but let me know your take on these sales figures and if you think it's darn time that they make Mario Kart 9. Now let's get to some Game Boy, Game Boy Advance action, why don't we? These systems have been kind of in limbo lately, living on the edge of the expansion pack, but not quite fitting in. All the rumors say that we're gonna get N64 and Genesis, and then we're gonna get Game Boy and Game Boy Color and maybe Game Boy Advance, that those are coming down the line and Nintendo needs to announce them because Nintendo Switch Online, that $50 don't feel all that fun right now. Well, new trademarks popped up just yesterday showing that Nintendo has filed for renewed trademarks for Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Now, this is something that happens often. So initially I said, mm, I'm not gonna read too much into it, but the timing is very, very convenient, isn't it? We're talking about them upgrading expansion pack, they're bringing new consoles and all the rumor people and insiders say they're not done upgrading this service and now they renew the trademarks for Game Boy and Game Boy Advance and they include stuff like downloadable applications and that would be perfect for Nintendo Switch Online. I fully think that's happening. I don't know how the rollout will go or when they'll start it or if they'll be all at once or if they'll piecemeal Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. In fact, that feels very Nintendo of them to just sort of do it as slow as a crab walk. But either way, these things are coming. We just need to wait for Nintendo to decide how they're gonna do it. At this point though, I think it's probably a 2022 project. We are getting really close to the tail end of 2021. We saw Advance Wars pushed out of this year. And I don't know that there's much more marketing space for them to move a new thing onto our Switch. Although I love it, I think we're gonna have to wait till 2022 to see Game Boy and Game Boy Color and maybe Game Boy Advance, but that would be a big win. And hopefully they just manage to make them have far less problems than the N64 titles that are glitched like Goofy. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd be more likely to buy into the expansion pack if they added Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. I know the answer is yes, but let's just, let's just say it for Nintendo, okay? Yes. All right, my friends, that is gonna do it for today's episode. I forgot the poll. I was streaming till like all hours of the night and pumping out videos for that AC update, which by the way is super cool. I've made enough videos, I don't need to talk about it here, but. Puppy.
But I do really enjoy it and they just packed that thing full of content, 9,000 items and a bunch of NPCs and just so much good stuff. So check out those videos if you're interested. Otherwise, I'll be back for another episode of GMM tomorrow. Until that time, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button on your way out. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. And if you're having a tired day where you feel down and out, just pick a goal, one thing, even if it's just to make it to the end of the day or make someone proud or just get that donut you've been waiting for. And I promise you, you will get there. Till that time, everybody, thanks again. Love you lots. Switch fours, out.